All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mind, Body, Spirit Virtual Summit 2018. I am here today with a very dear friend and colleague, Dr. Charlie Fagenholz. Um, For those of you guys who don't know, we go way back to chiropractic school together. And I'm sure we'll get to some of that crazy journey in this interview. Um, So first, I'm going to read to you his bio, and then we'll get started. So Dr. Charlie Fagenholz is a chiropractic kinesiologist who practices in Costa Mesa, California at the Cone Health Institute. The average patient he sees has been to an average of 10 to 12 other doctors in all fields, and most times he is viewed as their last resort. He states that his mission is to leave the world better than we found it and do it through chiropractic medicine. All right. Welcome, Dr. Charlie. Thank you for having me, Abby. Of course. <laughs> All right. Knock so, my stuff off. Totally. Um, so first off, I'd love for our listeners to hear about your story. What got you into chiropractic medicine and then more specifically chiropractic kinesiology? So um, <clears throat> growing up, you know, I was just the sick kid, uh, which is stereotypical for a lot of people. And uh, I was in and out of the hospital. You know, I had crazy things of mono. I had headaches. Uh, I always caught the flu. You know, I was always the one whenever the flu was going around, you know, Charlie's going to get it type kid, mm-hmm. common cold all the time. Um, but we had great health care, right? So with great health care comes a lot of uh, antibiotics, a lot of steroid use, uh, a lot of stuff that just keeps me sick. And uh, I just didn't know what I didn't know until I found out I didn't know it. And when I was growing up, uh, you know, I wanted to go into medicine because that's all I really knew. And I didn't know anything but med- drugs. So I was actually going to go to pharmacy school. and uh, <laughs> Which is now that I, so which funny. Is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy <laughs> to think now that I'm like, you know, on this spectrum. So right. um, was gonna, I went to University of Iowa, was going to apply to pharmacy school. And my mom had great advice, like all mothers do. You know, maybe you should do some job shadowing. And, um, and I did that. And within two minutes, I'm like, I was going to spend all this money to go be a pharmacist and do this the rest of my life. Like the most boring, it just did not resonate right. in the slightest. So, uh, you know, did some more shadowing of more docs that I had been familiar with podiatry. And then lastly, last but not least, honestly, was my chiropractor mm-hmm. who was just doing straight adjusting a little bit of like physiotherapy stuff. And I'd use them when I played basketball in high school. And within five minutes, literally, it was like the only person that when people walked in, they left immediately feeling better with a smile on their face, which every right. other person that I shadowed, people were just like still miserable, right. essentially. Right. And um, so that sung out to me. And I knew I could do that the rest of my life. So fast forward a few years, I go to chiropractic school. And <clears throat> I'm about to go to Italy and I have allergies. So I go to our naturopathic clinic. And by coincidence, the person who is my intern muscle tests me and uh, told me I need to go get adjusted by this kid in school because she couldn't adjust me. And this kid ended up, you know, showing me muscle testing and made me feel so good in, within 30 minutes of being treated. Uh, it was like, the, like I got goosebumps. It was like that, uh, that time when you figure out why you were born. Right, and uh, right. it just took me on a wild journey. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I love that. And I'm going to do a shout out. For the second time on the summit to Dr. Jordan Bray. Dr. Jordan Bray, because my man. did you know that he also introduced Dr. Christian Carroll to AK? He did. So yes, we were talking about this. I was like, he's like brought so many people into this world. It's so awesome. Totally, totally. Yep, yep. He's he's amazing. Yep. All right, awesome. So today with you, um, a little bit different than the other people we've interviewed, I really wanted to hone in on kind of a specific topic within health and wellness rather than just the overarching holistic philosophy. Of course. So um, you're the biochem guy. I <laughs> literally would rather gouge my eyes out than talk about biochem. So there's no one more <laughs> perfect to do that than with you. So. All right, here I am. Yep, here you are. So I want to talk about um, chronic infections, why they're important to address, what's the deal, why should people be concerned about this, and what can help them through it. So first, I'd love you to just give an introduction to, like, why is it important for people to look at the health of their immune system and chronic infections? Of course. So uh, I've been putting a lot of thought into it recently, and uh, we do a health class every Wednesday night at the Cone Health Institute where people come in and ask questions and answers. And when I do that, a lot of it goes back to chronic infection, all their symptoms, all their past history, all sounds very immune system driven. And, um, and really, you know, 
with these chronic infections, we think that if you have an infection, that you have like flu-like symptoms, you are sick, like stereotypical sick. But I try to get people to think that we have these chronic low-level grade infections that can be driving inflammation like all day long, mm -hmm. literally all day long on top of all the foods we eat, on top of all the EMF exposure, all the allergies and our, our allergens in our environment, um, all the GMO foods, you know, that the body, the, the body is the master adapter until one day it can't adapt anymore. Mm -hmm. And if we can get these infections and these uh, bugs, so to speak, you know, at a low level or just out of us, uh, our body's not fighting all day long. So we can handle our environment better. I mean, it's, the environment sucks. Let's just get real. The environment, right. you know, we're, we're not living in the same environment we were 100 years ago. It's just getting worse. Um, but in that aspect, you know, my mentor, Dick Versendahl, uh, always wanted to make people stronger. So you strengthen the host so that you can withstand this harsh environment. And I think, you know, cr uh, treating those chronic low-level infections is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people don't really know where it comes from. That's always the question. Like, so where did, it, where did I get all this? Well, the main bugs are parasites, viruses, fungus, and bacteria. Those are the main uh, classifications, if you will. Mm -hmm. And viruses are a big one. Uh, I, I believe it's not all flu viruses. I believe there's you know her different herpes family viruses like Epstein-Barr. Everyone knows monovirus. Uh, there's parvovirus. There's cytomegalovirus. There's HPV. There's, there's so much things. And I think a lot of it comes from childhood vaccines mm -hmm. because – uh, they're not flu-like symptoms, and the viruses that are in vaccines are very slow-growing viruses. And uh, it just popped in my head, so I have to say it. You know, the, the all these vaccine studies, they are always saying that you know there's no side effects. But those, I get the goosebumps when I say because it this pisses me off so much, <laughs> is because the the studies are only monitor the people for 48 hours, and if they don't have any symptoms within 48 hours, they're deemed safe. Right. Right. And later on in life, we have all these weird things like these these traveling like arthritis and all these weird cancers and stuff. And those are viruses turning on certain genes. Right. You know, a big thing is epigenetics. Bruce, uh, Bruce Lipton, biology of belief. You, you have a genes, but you need something to pull the trigger. You have a loaded gun. Something mm -hmm. needs to pull the trigger. Yeah. And what better than a virus or some type of bug that changes the way your immune system acts? Right. Totally. So. You know, viruses a lot of times are that. There are other sources. I think those are the main ones. That, that's what I find right. clinically. Um, that, that's viruses. Parasites. California is riddled with parasites. People love their sushi, right? Mm -hmm. People do not uh, filter their water. They, they drink out of the tap. They, they, don't shower, they don't filter their shower water. So they're inhaling the steam. Uh, it's super toxic. Uh, and people, what do we all love? I have them. You have them. Dogs. You know, right. pets, right. what do they do all day? They lick around, they lick themselves, right. they lick us. Right. Um, those are big sources. Some people say pork. You know, if it's not a good, reasonable uh, source pork, mm -hmm. I can see it. Um, but mostly, I usually find that it's usually animals, waters, or um, uh, sushi around my yep. area. Yep. Any tropical weather, <laughs> that's why when people go to like uh, Mexico, they get Montezuma's Revenge, they go to tropical areas. They those, When you get sick there, those that's parasites. Parasites right. and some bacteria. Right. So, I mean, moving on to bacteria, it's in our environment, um, could be in our food, uh, dogs, same thing. I would say that parasites and bacteria to me are really similar in the way they're transmitted and the sources. And then fungus uh, is a huge concern. Uh, not only is it from over excess of sugar, but antibiotics kill off all our good gut bacteria. And now it doesn't have um, any action on fungus. So our body just fills it in with toxic fungus because we love sugar. We're breathing in mold more places than we think. Mm -hmm. So I think between those, that's the biggest source. Mold's a big deal. Mold spores. Um, things that we breathe in that gets into us and then it just like it grows because we give it the perfect storm. We we're right. stressed all day long. Immune system goes down. We eat a bunch of sugar. Sugar feeds all of that. Uh, it's it will really set up for failure. That's why it's so important, like Versendahl said, to strengthen the host. Right. Right. It's like control what you can control. Because yeah. as much as if, uh, even if you're eating all the best, drinking the best water, eating organic, we've still got the soil issues. We've still got the environmental issues. So what you can control is yourself and like totally. biohacking yourself to handle all the stresses in a better yeah. way.
Absolutely. Okay, I just thought of this other question. Do you mm-hmm. believe, like, some people, this makes me think of the book Medical Medium, if you've ever read it. I haven't read it yet. you got to read it. I know, I know, I know. Actually, I'm really curious to hear, like, your take on it. My take? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, he puts out the theory that there's so many strains of these chronic viruses, too, that we haven't even discovered yet. Which I really thought rang true, because I'm like, this stuff, like, morphs and changes, and I'm sure there's a lot of it we can't even test for Mm -hmm. that's going around. Totally. I mean, that's, uh, the viruses, you could find some on blood work, and uh, for those of you who care about blood work, if your white blood cell count is outside of a 5 to an 8, clinically there's an infection. The reference range is 4 to 11, but if you're outside of that 5 to 8, there's some infection going on. And uh, you're going to get something called a 60-40 split. Your lymphocytes are going to shoot up into the 60s, whereas your neutrophils will go down into the 40s. And um, the thing about viruses is uh, they, when, when you first get a virus, a new virus, your IgM spikes. Now, the second time around, it doesn't spike. So they, the docs will look at that and say, well, there's no spike there. Uh, there might be no virus. But the second time around, your IgG spikes. And they never look at that. Right. So always look at that. Um, and, and you said that there's viruses that we haven't even identified yet. Wait till the ice caps start melting and all the ancient viruses start leaking out. And then we're really going to be screwed. Right. So we better strengthen <laughs> those hosts. <laughs> exactly. Them. And it circles back again. Right. Circles back around. Totally. Um, okay. So I want to segue into symptoms because we've made it pretty clear that probably all of us have some sort of viral load. Mm -hmm. that we need to take care of so i'd love to first kind of hear like traditional like textbook symptoms you might see but also kind of those weird offshooty symptoms that people would never really think to tie to viruses sure so the yeah let's let's talk about more just chronic infection Mm because they all the bugs can kind of give similar symptoms um the obvious is you know you have the fever you have the achy joints you feel run down you're fatigued uh, you could be throwing up. You could have diarrhea or some digestive disturbance. Uh, but on the flip, on, you know, even more so, low level, that, that's like an acute situation. Right. Like you have a virus that is or some type of infection that is just rampant inside you. Now, these chronic low level ones are more like, you know, oh, yeah, my, my knee, my joints ache a little bit, especially viruses. Viruses are going to give you those achy joints. Mm-hmm. Um, the parasites and funguses, I find, give more like low back pain. Because what happens is it, it destroys, it, it uh, makes your ileocecal valve uh, dysfunction. And as soon as that happens, now your hip flexors are off. When your hip flexors are off, now your glutes are off. Mm-hmm. When your glutes are off, now your pelvis is off. When your pelvis is off, everything's off, right? Right, right. So um, it, from a physical standpoint, I usually find it's like low back pain and joint pain. Uh, but then you're going to get things like, you can even get anxiety. Right. You can get depression. Right. You know, the the gut is your second brain. So I see that all the, the gut, time with parasites. Yeah, totally. Anxiety, yeah. depression. The vagus nerve yeah. goes from the gut right into the brain. It's like a two way highway, you know. And and um, a, a huge one for parasites: seizures. Se- little kids who have seizures, you better get checked for parasites mm-hmm. because parasites produce electromagnetic frequencies in your nervous system, and your nervous system is drawn is uh, um, uh, powered by electricity. So it has the ability to change that charge, and a seizure is just like a short circuit. Mm-hmm. So these parasites get in these kids, and also, you know, if the mom has parasites and there's breast milk and things like that, right. uh, get the mom checked. In Chinese medicine, they say treat the mom to get the kid well. Right. And um, so you'll get things like that. Um, kids who itch their butt all the time, who like pick their nose, are always itching their groin. Uh, kids who get weird around the full moon. Full moon is how parasites reproduce. That, that's their reproduction cycle. So when there's a lot of like fairy tale stuff around people act weird around the full moon, those are the parasite people. Right. I, right. I, I can go around in a classroom and, and around the full moon pick out which kid has parasites just off of how they act. Right. Um, I'm so then, glad you said that because I was going to ask you to talk about the full moon. It's crazy. It is absolutely <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It is wild. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and also, you know, moving along on the symptom stuff, anything from allergies – Headaches, you know, headaches are a big one. Mm-hmm. Depending on where your headache is, side of the head is gallbladder, front of the head could be liver. Liver is where a lot of viruses live. Mm-hmm. So headaches a big deal. Um, 
obviously GI disturbances is going to be pretty standard. It doesn't always have to be there, though. That's the big thing. A lot of patients will come in, they'll say, you know, my digestion is, is great, right? right. Uh, they don't have any diarrhea or constipation, but these bugs can do all the other stuff, too. Right. You know, right. the fatigue, the chronic insomnia, man. And what, what's happening is when you have all these infections, your body starts pumping cortisol. In my opinion, I was just, I was like literally in a daydream like a week ago thinking for like 30 minutes to myself until I snapped out of it. If you can balance the patient's cortisol, no matter what the cause is, mm -hmm. the patient will do well. Mm -hmm. Totally. And chronic infection is, chronic low level infection is so... Uh, cortisol driving that uh, it's a big deal. It your is body's big, always fighting. Totally. It's always in a state of fight or flight. Yeah. It's always yeah. fighting and then you can't adapt to anything else. So pretty much you can say take any symptom and somewhere there's probably going to be some type of infection. It could be any symptom from toe pain to depression. Right. Totally. All right. So We've kind of spoken a little bit about this, but what are some of the major, at least that you see, clinically causes of these chronic infections? Uh, Re-exposure. Re-exposure. I think that, um, you know, we talked about the drinking water. We talked about the foods. You know, sugar feeds them. Uh, food sensitivities will feed them. And the most common food sensitivities I see, number one, everyone hates me, caffeine. Mm -hmm. Caffeine is a cortisol driver. Yep. It is. Yep. You can make it healthy with butter. I totally understand it. I totally right. get the like the romance with coffee. Everyone right. loves their like right. coffee time. Right. I get it. I get it. <laughs> uh, but if you're sensitive to it and you weaken on a manual muscle test to caffeine or theophylline or theobromine or methyl, paramethylxanthines, any of the breakdown of caffeine, I don't care how good the coffee is. I need you to get off of it for at least three weeks. Now, have you seen people that do not weaken to it or in your experience is everyone sensitive to it? No, I find some people can adapt better than others because everyone's right. a biochemical individual. Right. I do find a lot of people get hypertonic to it where it's like puts them in fight or flight. Right. And right. Uh, a, week, a week and a half ago, one of my patients said, you know, the, I've had amazing results here, but the best thing you ever did for me was take me off coffee, right. take me off caffeine. Right. And I gave her like a five minute hug because that's the only time that pretty much people have told me that everyone else is like hating me. For doing that. <laughs> So like I had but she was happy, you know, right, right. Yeah, it was awesome. Totally. I like, it was totally made my day. I so, mean, uh, I totally get that. I, in January, went completely off caffeine. Mm -hmm. And I made it my mission to find the best caffeine coffee alternatives because I totally think it's a mind thing. And mm -hmm. it's about the ritual. It's about the habit. It's like having a warm drink or whatever. Sure. So... There's a lot of stuff you can do, and my favorite thing is to use, um, like, functional mushrooms because... Love it. Love it. Then it's like, duh, in the morning, you can have your, like, delicious, warm drink, but it's also, like, medicine that's actually helping yeah. your body function better. So I would encourage people that... Too. Yeah, I mean, I would encourage people that are kind of on that caffeine train, or if you know you cannot function in the morning with your coffee... That to me is a sign that like you're probably sensitive to it then. Totally. Like it's what's keeping you going. <laughs> and if you if you can't if you need it, your cortisol is already off. Right. Because right. cortisol is what gets you through the day. Right. It's it's your it's your energy. Right. Totally. So so caffeine's a big one. Obviously gluten and dairy, it's like beating a dead horse. Those are the buzzwords, everyone knows it. Um, uh, soy I find is a huge one. Uh, I also find nightshades to be a big one. Peppers, mm -hmm. eggplant, potatoes, not sweet potatoes, uh, pep and pota uh, potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, with eggplant being the most toxic. And those foods are the first foods I take all my arthritis patients off of. If you have any joint pain, eliminate nightshades immediately. Yep. Um, then I test for some other random foods, but those are the big ones. Corn is another one that I find that people are really sensitive to. Um, another one is oats. People love granola and oats, mm -hmm. but... They, and they, they get them uh, gluten-free. Right. However, proline or uh, uh, prolamine, pro, proline? Is it proline? Prolamine, I'm getting confused now, is the protein in oats, which is very similar to gliadin, which is the protein of gluten. Right. So it's a cross-reaction. Your body doesn't discern the difference. Right, right. Uh, so I find those to test, you know, pretty, um, uh, or weakening patients a lot. 
And at the end of the day, I think that the reason why you're sensitive to them is because they're driving these infections. They're feeding these infections. They're, they're, uh, uh, they're hiring your cortisol mm -hmm. so that your immune system goes down and the infections can thrive. So I think it's a big deal to get off food sensitivities uh, mm -hmm. while we fight off these infections. Right. Um, yeah. I, I, and then, uh, like I said, water, water samples, the shower, the water you shower in, the water you drink, um, swimming pools. I heard one in 12 swimming pools is infested with parasites, right. uh, hot tubs, things like that. Um, and I had one in the back of my head and I was just thinking, now I kind of blanked out on it. Um, oh, one thing is, uh, with any type of overgrowth of fungus, fermented foods actually feed fungus. So anything that's fermented, all of your kombucha, uh, your mustards, anything with vinegar, vinegar based, right. Right. uh, usually find that that actually makes fungal loads worse. And then, you know, all the good fermented vegetables I find are better after the fungus is down to where it's not going to feed it. Mm. That's uh, a really so that... good point because a lot of people, I think, it's kind of like a fad thing right now to do a totally. lot of fermented foods for your gut. Mm -hmm. But that displays the perfect importance of, like, having your own holistic practitioner you work with that totally. can help you determine what's really right for you. Yeah, and the whole goal is to do the right thing at the right time. Right. Because if, if you do a good thing at the wrong time, it's still the wrong thing. Right. So um, that's a big one. That That's one from Dr. Leibowitz that really um, helped me clinically. Because uh, I'd never heard that anywhere. I'd never read it anywhere. Right. right. And, and uh, that's helped a lot. Totally. A whole lot. Totally. Okay, so we've talked about all the infections, what can cause them. How should someone know... Or in your mm -hmm. opinion, is it just everyone? But how should someone know, like, okay, I should seek someone out who can look into this chronic infection stuff for myself? So I think that it should be everybody. Mm -hmm. Because, like, the Chinese stay, it's a lot easier to stay well than it is to get well. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, if you have any of those, if you have any brain fog, if you have any chronic pain anywhere, any physical pain, any digestive disturbance, headaches, uh, anxiety, depression, bipolar seizure and literally anything get checked and if it, it, what, you have nothing to lose right. i mean if it's not there great you know that's that's better right um but you know who's not going to benefit from seeing from uh uh from really getting like identifying these chronic low level infections i mean right. everyone's going to benefit from that right so right and all and another thing is um that's this is what also was on the back of my mind was re-exposure i find a lot of times spouses if you don't treat the spouse in, through sexual contact, it's a constant re-exposure. Mm -hmm. So that's another big deal too. Totally, totally. So do you ever um, recommend blood work for patients to show up for infections specifically? Um, for infection, not really. Mm -hmm. um, for everything else, yes. Uh, Dr. Chris Turnpaw is a great great functional medicine practitioner in Pennsylvania that I took uh, blood chemistry seminars from uh, through Apex Energetics. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said three things, or one thing that, but he really broke down into three things that really changed the way I looked at blood work. And he said that if you can run a CBC, a CMP, a thyroid panel, and a vitamin D, you can basically tell everything about a patient. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you read it functionally, you know, it. You don't need much more than that. Some some cases you do, but I've just just learned how to read those functionally, and I've picked up so much um, misdiagnosed stuff. Uh, but it's more so like which vitamins, you know, what's being right. affected, that kind of stuff. It's not so much like what type of infection. Right. That's why I lie on muscle testing. I rely totally. on that. Totally. Well, so. that's a perfect segue because – a lot of our listeners might not really know exactly how you practice when we say like chiropractic kinesiology, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you, in your office with the patient, determine um, their chronic infection load? So we use, uh, you know, umbrella term applied kinesiology, and that's really spun off into different techniques uh, with the biggest one I use being contact reflex analysis. And, um, and what I say is, um, I say, you know, this is going to kind of look a little weird because things that you're not familiar with, people tend to just kind of, you know, f not shy away from, but kind of think a little out there for some people. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I say, listen, we're going to have a, a dialogue with your nervous system. Instead of me, it, your body knows more than what I think. So right. what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a manual muscle test and I'm going to communicate with your nervous system to see if you can or can't adapt. 
and I keep it at that because I say that at the end of the day, if you can adapt, you're good. If you can't adapt, you're not good. Right. So instead right. of getting into the, all the, you know, airy fairy, all that kind of stuff, uh, I just, that's how I, I ground it like that. Right. You know, and, and I get airy fairy. Don't get me wrong. I get really airy fairy. And I know you know that. <laughs> but, um, but you don't need to go into all of that. It's, you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to. So I just say, you know, I'm just going to um, uh, use your arm and we're going to use the, the deltoid muscle to really see if the, if the brain can or can't adapt, if your nervous system can or can't. And we're going to be touching different, uh, I, I say acupuncture points because people know the name acupuncture. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They're really just reflex points, portals. And, um, and I say if, cause we're water, uh, my fingertips are electric. And when I touch here, uh, if your body can adapt, then you'll, your nervous system will kick in. If it can't, then you will neurologically test like a weak, uh, muscle test. Mm -hmm. So I just explain that to them. And then I go into, for infection, I go into uh, vial testing. Um, there are some reflex body points that I get through with CRA. And if any of them test, then I usually go in with a uh, Leibowitz test kit. And, uh, Michael and Noah Leibowitz are good friends of mine. Uh, they're really the people who taught me about all the dysbiosis and all the bugs, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like mentors in right. that aspect. And, uh, and then I, I have these little vials that have the frequency of, you know, I, I have 20, I think it's 23 vials. There's 600 different microbes in them. Right. And I'm going to see if you can or can't adapt. And it might not tell me the exact virus or the exact parasite, but I, at the end of the day, we're going to treat it the same. And you know something's so if, there. so Yeah. So yeah. if you really want to know what type, then, I mean, most times stool sample is going to miss it. For parasites, you need to do at least a three-day catch. I mean, I still don't think it's going to get all the microscopic ones. Right. So I tell people, you know, you can go spend the thousands of dollars or however much to do that, or you, we can see what your body can adapt to. We can treat that. Right. And see how you go, how you get. And right. I've never had anyone have to do anything uh, further. Right. Most people feel better and they don't care about what the label is yeah. or the totally. name is of it. Yeah. yeah totally. Absolutely. Okay. So you're a chiropractor. You're not using, obviously, prescription medications, antibiotics, right. all that type of stuff to treat this. So right. what types of nutritional supplements or dietary support are you using with people to help with this stuff? So for young ones, um, like kids who at least under the age of five, but even sometimes up to like 10 when they don't like, you know, swallowing pills right. or anything like that, I usually use homeopathics. Mm -hmm. um, I use the NET, Parasolve and Flora Plus or the King Bio. Uh, they have a Paracleanse, a yeast free, uh, the, uh, the detoxodes we use, which have all the different bugs. Mm -hmm. um, I find those work really well for kids. Mm -hmm. um, but the most common thing I find tests are herbs because herbs are nature's antibiotics. Right. And um, when animals are sick and they get intestinal worms, they go in nature and they eat one plant until they feel better. Right. And uh, so that's kind of Leibowitz's um, theory on it. And I totally uh, resonate with that. So I use his nutrition, Supreme Nutrition, 99.9% um, .9 of the time. Uh, they're single herbs. And uh, anywhere from one to three, I find tests on people, and uh, that I mean those work wonders. They're, right. That's the oldest medicine right there. Right. Uh, uh, between Supreme Nutrition and Vervita's Nutrition, I pretty much don't use anything else besides the homeopathy. Right. Uh, Vervita has Cleanse, which is an oregano uva ursi blend. Uh, they have black cumin oil, which I probably dispense that more than like anything else. It's right. so good for right. so much stuff. Um, so I use some essential oils. Uh, I use herbs mostly, uh, like, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, and then for dietary change, I definitely just test them on all their food sensitivities, whatever they test weak on or too hypertonic, like it puts them in fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. I pull them off it for 21 days is my like golden rule. Right. Um, I've read some research that if you have a chronic virus that a high protein diet will feed it. If you have a chronic parasite, high fat will feed it. And if you have chronic uh, bacteria or yeast, high sugar will feed mm -hmm. it. But I find sugar feeds all of them. Right. Um, so instead of getting into that, because, you know, we need, it's not like you can like starve yourself. I know there's intermittent right. fasting and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. But uh, I, I find that people do well with good fats and good proteins right. and, you know, and good carbohydrates. So um, I'm really more interested in getting them off their food sensitivities 
uh, because I find they're a lot more compliant that way. Right. And when I, even off their food sensitivities, when I tell them like caffeine's a no no, they're already like hating me. Right. So if I take away more food, right. it's not going to get to the end goal. And the whole right. goal is to leave them better than when I found them. So right. I need them to stay on um, track and I need to make it possible for them so I can kind of do it in stages or uh, like a progression. Right. Totally. Well, and then once they're feeling so much better, they're like on board. Yeah. Totally. So then it's not as much of a shock if you're like, okay, we're going to take away maybe this source of protein doesn't work for you right now or whatever. Exactly. Okay. And so if someone, let's say they don't have access to a healthcare practitioner, whatever, they just want to address their overall internal balance and their immune system and the chronic infection, what would be some things that you would recommend they remove from their diet right away? Mm, uh, refined sugar. So mm-hmm. breads, rice, pastas, um, dairy, I find is a big one. Uh, the, the thing about gluten and dairy is the protein of them, the casein and the gliadin. Every time you ingest it, there's something called NF Kappa B, which is like the great inflammation marker in all of our cells. It's kind of like the incredible Hulk. When you make it angry, it like flips out Mm -hmm. and then your immune system goes crazy. Uh, It triggers 300 inflammatory pathways for 180 days. So when people say, oh yeah, I got off gluten for a month or dairy for a month and I didn't notice a change, you need to do it for six months. You you gotta do it for at least 180 days. And with some of the stuff we do with muscle testing, it's sooner than that, you know, but uh, not right. everyone has access to that. So right. totally. uh, definitely those two are the biggies. Um, fermented foods, if it's the fungus thing, uh, just get off of that. And here's a big one is uh, probiotics. You know, a lot of people talk about probiotics. And the more I'm in practice, the more I don't like probiotics. Mm-hmm. Um, I do love sporebiotics. I mm-hmm. love Megaspore. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some probiotics, don't get me wrong, uh, in our clinic that do test well at certain points, sure. but it's, it's not, I, I find that it makes a lot of the overgrowth of fungus worse. Um, and it, that's, that goes back to the whole, the right thing at the right time. Totally. So you got to do the spore biotic, you got to do the, maybe the probiotic after the infections down, because a lot of times probiotics come from cow intestines. Right. Just, right. Ugh, just think about that. Wolf. Like that's disgusting. Yeah. Right. I'd rather eat dirt and get a spore biotic. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and that's, I'm so glad you said that because I also really wanted to ask your view on probiotics. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's awesome because Dr. Tom Bain, who is one of the creators mm. of Megaspore Biotic, is also on this summit. Um, so definitely check out that interview. Look for it. It's totally. unbelievable. But for me, I've heard him speak many times. He's like does events at our clinic and um, here in Chicago. And the more I hear him speak, I'm like, why would anyone take anything but a sport? That's probably <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense. Like yeah. when you learn about it and the science behind it, yeah, it's just unbelievable. And he's basically like, yeah, I mean, nothing else even works. So what's the point? Like he's yeah. so cut and dry about it. It's, <laughs> yeah. and he, but he's so grounded too. Yeah. He's, no, if, if anyone gets a chance to listen to him, don't miss him speaking. Cause it is a yeah. treat. Yeah. And, um, I mean, back in the old days, cavemen got their probiotics through dirt right. and spores. Totally. Yeah. You know, they didn't they didn't go to Whole Foods and all these places and buy cow intestine derived bacteria and put it in their mouths. They just right. didn't. Right. Well, so. and I love your point about like the right thing at the right time. It's so important mm-hmm. because it's so easy to get listen to podcasts or get sucked down the internet wormhole and be like okay, I need to take cranberry extract and a probiotic and ginger and turmeric every day and a fish oil. And all of that is great. Mm -hmm. And part of me then I'm like, okay, simmer it down because people are excited (laughs) about supplements and like actually are looking for it, which is cool. Um, Like people are way more mindful about that than even five years ago. But unfortunately, you get what you pay for. Mm-hmm. You know, the even the pharmaceutical industry is catching on to this. Now you go in CVS or Walgreens and there's shelves of supplements yep. and they're horrible quality. And in my opinion, totally. don't do anything like it's a sugar pill. Yep. So um, it's it's like great to have that mindset, but all the more important to seek out like a professional healthcare provider who can point you in the right direction of really good quality products. And that's yeah. the difference. And even to take that a step further is there's a lot of great products out there. And like in our clinic, we have 2,000 products, but everyone's a biochemical individual. So just Mm -hmm. because one product got miracles for somebody, the next person can take that and like 
not have any change at all because right. it's not the right thing for their or chemistry. Or feel worse. Yeah, seriously. Right. So right. between, you know, muscle, that's why muscle testing is so great is because it, it, it is so specific to the person in front of you. Uh, there's really no tool better for the per- for the person in front of you. There is totally. nothing. I'm I'm convinced. Totally, I say that all the time to my patients. Like, I'm sure you experience that when they first come in and they're like, "Are you psychic? Like, how do you know yeah. that?" Blah uh, blah. And I'm like, I mean, I really think can't take the credit. It's your body. Like, I actually don't sure. do anything. <laughs> I muscle test you. I'm I'm like an idiot. I don't know. But um, (laughs) I tell them, like, I don't know how people practice without muscle testing. Like, it's such an amazing tool. Blows my mind. Blows my mind. Okay, so why do you think, I want to get, like, a little more Uh woo-woo. Uh-huh. Why do you really think that people suffer so much with chronic infections? Like, take the environmental stuff out of it. Like, why Mm -hmm. is this really such a big issue when people are so sick and, like, autoimmune is such a huge problem? You know, we've got, like, all these diseases, like, skyrocketing. Like, yeah, the environment sucks, but there's no way that's the whole picture. Yeah, I I think that it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's people unhappy with themselves. I think that it's the internal of them being really hard on themselves. And uh, even just that emotion of you being hard on yourself shuts down your lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. Your lymphatic system is how we get garbage out of us. So anything that we, you know, um, attract into us can't get out. So and stress just all this, all that kind of stuff just heightens cortisol, lowers our immune system. Um, You know, and if you want to get woo, I mean, even think about people who are alone. Like they just feel like they're alone. What are they going to attract? They're going to attract bugs because right. they like energetically are welcoming anything into them right. to not be alone. Right. You think about it that way. Right. That's good. Um, I like that. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, we, it, everything starts with ourselves. It all starts from within. Mm-hmm. And, totally. and uh, I'm sure yeah. that, you know, we've talked about this on a couple other interviews with chiropractic kinesiologists like yourself, but like the trite of health, right? Mm-hmm. So you could take all the perfect supplements, eat the perfect diet, but if you're so alone or constantly beating yourself up or in a horrible relationship or job or whatever, yeah. are you really going to get better? Like, can your body even heal That's right. in that environment? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you you have to do the try to health. If you don't, I always start our health class off by saying, if you do not get all the aspects of the try of health, it's not true healing and you will never heal all the way. Mm-hmm. To where you need to be. I don't right. know if we're ever always healed all the way because, you know, no one's perfect. Right, right. But to get you from where you're at to functioning very well. Right. Totally. And I'm sure you see that all the time in your clinic is maybe even people, let's say, low back pain, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe they love chiropractic and have seen it chiropractors before and it's helped, you know? And yep. like their low back pain has been in remission for five years and all of a yep. sudden they like, bent over in the car and threw their back out and getting adjusted isn't cutting it. Yeah. You know, and totally. then when See it, it finally resolves is when you fix their parasites or whatever. Yeah. You fix their chronic infection, which then changes, you know, like George Goodhart started AK. It's always muscles that share nerves with certain organs. Mm-hmm. And when they're not functioning, you get muscle problems. So whenever you have a muscle issue that you've done all this type of physical stuff to it, and it hasn't changed it, guess what? You're not getting to the cause of it. Right. And uh, yeah, w- uh, emotions and chronic infection is a fantastic place to start. Totally. Totally. Um, okay. I want to talk about air quality for a second. <laughs> yeah. Welcome <laughs> to California. Yeah. Um, because we talked about how stuff can be transmitted from the air to right mold, spores, dust, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. What do you recommend people can do to help? Like you're in your home the most or work mm-hmm. to help at least the stuff you're breathing all the time, be better and cleaner. Uh, awesome that you said that because last week I actually purchased something called molecule. I knew you were going to say molecule. Yeah. It is so good. It's so do good. Do you actually like, have it? You've tried it? Yeah, I have it. I have it running right now. Uh, and you can tell a difference. You love it. So I, I actually found um, in our – we 
we just moved in this place uh, we're renting uh, since January. Yeah. And in the front bathroom, I started feeling, smelling kind of weird stuff. And I started right. getting like allergy symptoms. Right. So I had to um, do my own tests and stuff. And I grew a little bit of stuff on Petri dish. And they're actually coming to check tomorrow. Are you serious? If there was, yeah. And they're coming to check <laughs> it's like tomorrow. like a biochem lab in your house. So, so uh, my neighbor is a really handyman. So he was telling me that there was water damage prior huh. twice in the last seven years. So right. he took down the, the light fixture and looking up, there's a little bit of black stuff, which I don't know if it's black mold, looks black mold. Right. I don't know. Right. Um, however, all I do know is that I did some research and bought this molecule. And within 24 hours, the smell was gone and I wow. felt a complete difference. Um, I actually just reached out to them. Uh, earlier today saying that they need to come to ICAK this year totally. and have a booth because they need to get into our community. 100%. Um, yeah. Because it's a big deal yeah. and it's a amazing nanotechnology filter uh, that you control through the, on an app on your phone right. and you can turn it's it awesome. on off. Like, and it, it's, all, it's great. So totally. definitely check out Molecule. It's M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E. Um, definitely... Um, uh, there's one thing called oil to air, which I give a lot of people. It's like an essential oil spray that helps kind of neutralize a little bit of toxins. I, right. I, I like that. Right. Um, but then I always I have patients bring in their air samples, and I just see what supplements negate it, just to make them stronger towards it until they can get something that will clean sure. it out. Right. Or because uh, at the end of the day, you just need to get. It, it's like. Um, it's like when when fish are sick, you don't treat the fish; you take them out of the tank and change the right. tank. Right. You got to change your environment in right. some aspect. We can strengthen right. you, but at the end of the day, you got to take away that re-exposure. Right. Well, what do you think? Have you read? There's like studies out there now that show that, um, like burning sage actually kills bacteria and stuff in the air. Yeah, I mean, which I is like so cool. Every, yeah, I burn yeah. sage every night. That's I don't. Awesome. I don't know how I didn't think of that too. Right. Well, there you I go. I burn it. Yeah, I burn it every night. Sage we burn it, it up. Clinic every night. Yeah, sage. Yeah. My wife does even more than I like it. <laughs> it's, and I'm not complaining. Totally. But it's, it's no, a big deal. The spouses are on board. I was coming home, driving home today and talking to Justin, who's my husband. He's like, I just saged the whole house and opened all the windows. I mean, it's the best. what better than that? Right. Totally. But my psychic friend will say, you have to open up like the windows and doors after to like let all the stuff yeah, out. It's very I agree. important. Okay, so you're seeing a patient, you're ch helping mm -hmm. to change their environment, making cleaner, you're starting them on a protocol. In your experience, like let's say the perfect patient that does everything you say, takes all the supplements, mm -hmm. how long would you say it would take for, I don't want to say them to be perfect, but you know, uh -huh. their symptoms to resolve, them to be like doing yep. really well? Um, if, if they listen with the food sensitivities yep. and um, do the, the diet like that to a T, um, and they get tested on the right supplements. If they're not 50% better within two to three weeks, I think we're missing something. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that, that's my rule of thumb is within two weeks, if we're not at least 50% better between two and three weeks, uh, then we're missing something. There's some re-exposure, there's something that we're not, uh, picking up. And right. we gotta uh, dive further into it. Right. So it's pretty quick turnaround. I mean, I've seen it overnight. I've I've had patients right. take one dose of an herb and come back and like look like a different person right. the next day. Right. Um, right. And then I've had other people that take you know a month. Some people, I mean, like I said, are you know by the time that I see them, they're usually down the rabbit hole. Right. Totally. And it's a steep climb. Right. And uh, some people, you know, climb it faster than others. But it's, like I said, it's all the, the right thing at the right time. So just because some people get uh, faster sooner doesn't mean they're doing the wrong thing. It just means right. that you're at a different journey, uh, part of your journey. Totally. So that's a good guideline, though. Two to three weeks, 50% or better. Yeah, totally. All right. Yep. Okay, so I want to segue into some more, like, fun questions okay. about you. Um, okay. Here we go. Here we go. I know. Here we go. This one's the first one's easy. Um, what books are you reading right now? I know you're like always reading something new and fun. Yeah. Um, so I actually just got done reading The Alchemist. Mm -hmm. um, I had not read the, read the Alchemist before. Um, and I actually, um, it's f funny that you're asking this question because uh, I talked to one of my other mentors, Dr. George Gonzalez, who started quantum neurology. Mm -hmm. And um, he told me, he goes, we have the best job in the world, but you have to do something in your life that doesn't pertain to anything that we do. 
so that you don't completely burn out. So yeah, I totally uh, agree with that. So yeah. what what I started do, what I actually just bought was a 700 page book on the beginning of the New York Mafia and the five <laughs> families of New York. So I've always been interested. I love mafia movies, Godfather, all that totally. stuff. So it, it's a way to kind of take me out of. Um, take a break from what we do all day long and I think totally. it helps me recharge and it's not like a, you know like a personal development book or anything yes. like that yes um because that still is you know it's within kind of our, working still yeah it's yeah. still working and yeah. uh, so that's the it's called the five families and it's the origins of uh the Sicilians moving to New York and New Orleans and right. um you know corrupting America <laughs> And it's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. It's great. It's awesome. I love that. I think that's so important for anyone in any field. Yeah. Totally. Um, but I think especially us, like we get so absorbed in our field because my husband says this all the time. My husband's a teacher. He loves what he does. He's great at it. But it's his job. Like he yeah. comes home. He has all these other hobbies. He whatever. Like for us, this is like our life. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. You know, yeah. it's like a lifestyle. It's your career. It's your passion. It's like all of it. So... I think you're so right. Because, I mean, you know, we went to school together. We were like crazy and at seminars every two seconds and like learning a thousand things. And I'm still like that. I'll still be on Amazon and be like, ooh, ooh. And I order five books. And my husband's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, go read Harry Potter again or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like, mean, I, we need I that. I was like, I was um, on my days off. I was still reading CRA manuals, which right. I still read, obviously. Watching but I was the videos. Reading, yeah, watching yeah. videos, yeah, reading yeah. functional blood work, um, right. just constantly looking at different nutritional things and just trying to study or just trying to better me in every way within right. our professional life. And, right. and um, that really, when George said that to me, it really uh, uh, resonated. And I can tell you yeah. that that uh, definitely... Uh, Feels right. Yeah. Feels totally. good. Okay. Now, my next question is, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, man. Um, go <laughs> to a applied kinesiology chiropractor <laughs> immediately when you're in utero. Like, <laughs> have your mom go before you're even a thought. Right. Uh, right, 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 right. Um, what would you say to yourself at that point in college when you were, like, so sick? Um as a standpoint of like what advice would I give yeah. to get yeah. well kind of thing? Yeah, or in general. It could be life advice too. Um, hmm. Because I'm sure there was other stuff going on too besides just health stuff. Totally. Which is why uh, I would so say uh, for sure, I just still go back to just go get treated by right. an AK doc. And right. I went to University of Iowa and now I'm good friends with a doc who was 20 minutes away in Cedar Rapids who is a amazing doc who would right. have – I mean, I hate saying that she would have changed my life. She would have changed my life, but right. sometimes you got to experience your journey. Yes. To like have a breakdown yes. and have a breakthrough. No, you needed your whole story to be where yeah. you are. So yeah. So I, I like it's a great question. I don't know if I would do anything different besides just say go get treated. I mean, right. now that I know what I know. <laughs> right. But uh, it it carved who I am and and what I do now, and totally. I don't think that I would have really changed anything about it. Totally. You yeah. wouldn't have ended up at that first AK seminar with McDonald's breakfast. Yeah, first AK. I was seriously. not going to let you get away with this interview without bringing that, that up. That was the last time I ever had McDonald's. <laughs> it was the second week of February 2013. Our first AK 100-hour class. The and best. I had a sausage McMuffin, no egg, and a hash brown and barbecue sauce. I remember. It smelled so bad. And everyone was like, what are you doing? And you're like, it's so good. So good. <laughs> Seriously. So, That's yeah, that best. was last time I ever had McDonald's. Yeah. I remember but, Dr. Renner, who was our instructor, he was like, yeah. all right, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, that's perfect. Today we'll be going over nutrition. Right, right. And uh, he oh, basically man. just shattered my childhood. Right, right. Yeah. That's so, the best. Okay. Yeah. Um, speaking about, like, how to have balance, um, how to go throughout your day, how to bring in other things that don't have to do with work – what is your morning routine? I find most people have like a set routine they need to do in the morning. I find that I don't have a set routine. I have a set like theme. Mm -hmm. So um, before I get out of bed, I always stretch and breathe and set my intention. Mm -hmm. I will do that. Um, lately, I've been, you know, drawing an Oracle card in the morning, seeing, you know, I love all that stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, drinking a lot of water. 
uh, depends, you know, on mornings that I work uh, as opposed to when I'm not working. I'll definitely get in the sun when I'm not working, go on the balcony. I, I live on the ocean, so it's kind of mm-hmm. nice. Um, uh, that's the, the biggest theme is to set my intention for the day. And to, uh, every night before we go to sleep, the wife and I do what we're grateful for for that day. We've done it um, for the last three years every night. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just set the intention of the morning and, uh, you know, send out, you know, I'm, I, say, I always say that I'm looking for people who are looking for me. Right. Just asking higher power, God, source, um, you know, right. to who all, all those people who are taking a knee in prayer, looking for a solution to uh, somehow uh, connect with us. And um, that's my that's my theme. Uh, sometimes I'll do yoga, you know, uh, when I have uh, time when I'm uh, on days off. Right. Right. Um, but that that's basically the the biggest thing is uh, stretching, breathing, and setting the intention. I would say is the biggest thing that I do consistently as a theme. Totally nice. Yeah. And if you could have dinner with one person, alive or dead, who would it be? Dee Dee Palmer. Nice. Dee Dee Palmer, I would say. Um, Can you explain who he is and why? That's your answer. Dee Dee Palmer was the man who created chiropractic. Um, it's tough between him and BJ Palmer, his son who developed chiropractic. Right. Uh, but I think for the man who turned down becoming a medical doctor and developed his own medicine that has just changed so many lives and he was so far ahead of his time. I mean, it's like, I would just love just, I have the goose, but like my hair is standing up. Like I would just love to be in the presence of an individual like that. Right. Totally. He would be, my, he'd be my go-to. Right. My go-to. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Last question before we wrap up, what's mm-hmm. next for you? What new and exciting projects or seminars you're doing? Stuff like that. Uh, next seminar I'm doing is module three quantum neurology. Uh, I, you have to take each module twice before you're certified. So I'll be certified by the end of this year at mm-hmm. homecoming in November. Uh, so that's the next seminar. Um, and I just recently started teaching West Coast uh, contact reflex analysis seminars. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, trying to look at doing a seminar every quarter in Long Beach, California, because uh, there's an airport there, uh, nice. easy in, easy out. Um, so that's kind of the, uh, the biggest thing on my plate is to select a hotel, to get something running that's a constant quarterly thing. Right. Um, and I, I'm doing a lot of traveling. A lot of people are getting married, so a lot of traveling. Right. Um, speaking at ICAK in August. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the biggest things that are coming up. Nice. Awesome. So, yeah. Yep. So I love for our listeners to know how they can like follow you, keep in touch with you, see like you're always sharing great articles and stuff. Sure. Um, online. So what's your Facebook, or how can they find more information about you at the clinic? Um, so the clinic is cone, C O H N health Institute.com. Uh, on Facebook, it's Dr. Charlie Fagenholtz. Uh, and there's some, there's DC P A K F I A M A after my name, but you'll, there's not too many Charlie Fagenholtzes out there. So I think you'll find it. Um, and well, then on Insta- yeah, I was going to say, we'll link all of this too by your interview. Yeah. So people will find it easy. And then Instagram is C H I D O C shy doc 89. And uh, I share a lot more on Facebook, Instagram. I'm not as up on, right, um, right. Cause there's a lot of articles on Facebook. It's easy to share. Right, and, uh, totally. you can see me get on my soapbox and, you know, get totally. a bunch of arguments going if on. You loved Charlie's soapbox today. <laughs> just a taste <laughs> oh, of man. what Facebook is like. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. It, it's interesting. It's all good though. I it mean, it, I'm all, people I'm have always... got to share what they know and both sides like I'm a big proponent of you know even on the I didn't mean to segue to the vaccine thing but on that topic you know people ask me about it all the time and I'm like my biggest thing is just be informed nobody is informed nobody nobody and nobody. you cannot make a decision without being informed yeah on both sides and so yeah. know what's in the ingredients of the medications, the vaccines you're getting, all of that stuff, know fully about all the potential side effects and then make your decision. And if your decision is still go that road, then you fully informed yourself and chose it. And if not, like you're glad you didn't. So, you know, that's it. 
I'm not going to judge you on if you do it. If you're informed and you, it's your choice, right. it's your freedom. You can do what you want. Right. But if you can convince me that injecting toxins directly into your bloodstream that goes directly into your brain that misses 80% of your immune system is healthy, then I'm all ears. Right. But I logically, every right. person I've ever talked to can't answer that question. Right. They, they can't. Right. And uh, until you can answer that question, um, they, they, they're not good. Right. They're right. just not, uh, <laughs> they're just, there's no safety with them. They're, it's Right, right, right. It's an uphill battle. It is an uphill battle when you have those in your system. And I'm fully vaccinated. Like right. my parents weren't informed. They just did right. what the you know, GP. Right. You but know, guess what? When you and, and I were vaccinated, there was a third of what there is now. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Now it's just like. It's, so that to yeah. me is like learn about it. Learn about the industry and how things have skyrocketed and how mm-hmm. all diseases have also skyrocketed. And yeah. make your own conclusions, you know, watch documentaries yeah. about it, read all the articles, read about what people have, you know, the parents that are all shut down, that yeah. have seen direct effects on their children. And then make your own choice. If that's what you choose, fine, and we'll support your immune system the best we can, and totally. help you process through it. But most people I know, at least the population that like comes to see me, which is mm-hmm. a different population. But Once they are fully informed, um, almost 100% of the time, they either choose not to or to do delayed schedule. Yeah. Um, And that's it. All the information's out there. Like, that's what's so great about the internet is you can really have access to all that. And unfortunately, most, a lot of pediatricians aren't really, they don't even know what the ingredients are. They Mm -hmm. just know what the schedule is. And that's what they they do. They know so, what the CDC tells them to do. Right, right. And yeah, I mean, if if you can't question, if you can't think outside the box, um, then you're missing the boat. You're missing the boat. And if you do what you're told um, from people who benefit off of uh, keeping people vaccinated, uh, that makes no sense. Right. So. Right. Totally. Yeah. 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 All right. That was a great end rant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. I, like, I have like a million things going on in my head right now i can like sit here for like 30 minutes and just no rant. i know we could do but... like 30 more of these and i'm sure we'll yeah. have you on again yeah and, uh, I'll, uh, and we'll i'm always it. up for a good rant totally i know so for more rants tune into dr charlie's <laughs> facebook page and ask right. him any question and yeah yeah i'm, I'm always i'm up to answer any question uh you know, and if you need uh, advice or recommendation for a doctor like us in your area, I'm totally uh, up for finding someone uh, in your area as well. So any anytime you need literally anything, um, I'm here to help. Totally. And that's I love that because that's one of the greater vision purposes of this summit is to mm-hmm. connect all these people with great resources that yeah. they can reach out to because... A lot of times it's hard where to even start to find someone to work with, you know, so that's perfect. All right, Dr. Charlie, thank you so much for your time. Thank Um, you for having me. Can't wait to post this. And don't forget, guys, check out the notes below Dr. Charlie's interview for how to keep in touch with him. And we'll talk soon. Take care.